So, oh, it's not going to. It's not going to bay. So, what I wanted to talk about was what I want to talk about is testing some some work we've done recently that builds on something I talked about last year. So, last year, those of you who were here, I talked about a new testing. Well, how we've taken the testing framework that's existed for LaTeX. 2e and they did three for uh, a very long time and we've tried to and we made it into something that you could use more generally we've changed it from being a Perl script into being a Lua script etc and how we made that more generally useful so what I then looked at various people suggested that what we could do then is we could use one of these modern what are called continuous integration setups the idea that you can have uh, a web service somewhere that will test your code each time you, you make a change, each time you have a source commit. So that's what I want to talk about. And the one I'm going to, we, we, we picked up on is one that's free for open source project. It's called Travis CI. Um, hence the, the title. It's a Travis song title, more or less. And um, I just want to really talk about how, how I've gone about setting that up. I'm um, not sure it's going to take me a half an hour, but it, it hopefully be interesting. It's, there's no real tech in this talk as a result because it's all about testing and, and the scripting that's used for that. So we start off with the idea, where we are, here we are. So nowadays the LaTeX 3 development code is on GitHub. Um, as some people will be aware, that's not the master version. The master version is in subversion on a, a server which only the team have <coughs> access to, but this mirror is nowadays Live, it's, it's mirrored once an hour from, from, from that, so it's essentially live. And what that then offers us is the possibility that we can integrate various services into whenever we make a change on the GitHub data. Uh, you can do it, I would say, it was pointed out, I should point out that there are other services available. I've picked Travis because it's free, but there are other ways of doing this. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to run the tests each time we make a commit. And the reason for doing that is, although team policy is that we test everything before we commit. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's the team policy that we commit before, uh, we test before we commit. Um, doesn't always happen. And to run all of the tests we have takes a little while. It's about five or six minutes on my laptop. Um, and so that's asking a lot if you think there's a one-line typo in a file that you're absolutely certain isn't going to affect anything else. And, of course, that's not unique. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. That's not <coughs> unique to, to tech or LaTeX, so it's unsurprising that lots of people invested in developing all sorts of things have come up with the idea of this continuous integration testing. So you could set this up on a, a local machine. You could have your own server that was running your software and doing the testing. But the idea of using a web service <coughs> is that we don't have to run the system ourselves. And also, uh, these are all done nowadays using virtual machines. So each time a test is run, the system is, goes back to a known state. So you're always testing on a known setup. Now, that's going to pose a few little minor issues, but it, it basically works. So over here, we've got what we're going to see as the output. So we've got, this is, um, well, you can see I've got one from one of my own projects. It says it's failing, but there are reasons for that. And as you can see, we get a nice, so Travis have a, a very nice web interface where you can see whether your test is, is passing or failing. And currently, things are passing for, for the LaTeX 3 code. If I uh, go through the history, most of the time it should be passing. Yeah. But if you go down, I know there are some, oh. It's a while since we've had one that said failing. There we are. You can see at some point I broke something. Um, and we get a failing. And when it fails, it sends an email. So what, we need to do, what I needed to do was get this to work. How does all this actually work? It's all controlled by a couple of files. So the first one we have is this one. This is a, a hidden file you have to have in the main directory of your, your repository, .travis.yml, and it's a configuration file which is nice and human readable, and you'll see there's a few little lines in there, and the reason is that unsurprisingly, th these, these continuous integration servers have been developed for people doing C code, Perl, Ruby, things like that. Not that many tech users of continuous integration at present. And so, <coughs> if our project was one of those more common languages, all I'd have in that configuration file would be to tell Travis what kind of language I, I was using, 
and probably it would know how to test it. So if I said it was a C project, it would, look, it would assume I've got a make file, and it would just do make check. However, we don't have that, so I have to do a bit of work. And the first bit of work we have to do is we have this line here that says script techlua build.lua check dash h. So that's what the, script, the test script itself is going to do. So we're using Lua tech, or we're using the, the Lua in Lua tech for our test system. So that's tech Lua. We call our script build.lua. The target is check, and dash h tells the script to halt on the first failure. Because if it's an automated test system, there's no point in running all the tests. If it's, if it's failed on the third test, we might as well just stop and report things have gone wrong. So that's fine. That would, so that line tells Travis that that's the type of testing we want to do. But Travis is running a virtual machine. It's running um, an Ubuntu uh, long-term support system with a standardized setup. And that standardized setup, again, is targeting people doing C, Perl, Ruby. And so it doesn't have a tech system installed by default. So we need to tell it to add a tech system. Now, it's running Ubuntu, so I could use their package manager to add a standardized, the standard uh, tech system that that has. That's Tech Live 2009 on the system that uh, they're using <coughs> currently, which is a problem. It's not only a problem because the package is out of date. It's a problem because Lua Tech has changed so much since then that our test script won't run on the version of Lua Tech in Tech Live 2009, or rather it'll run and it'll say everything fails because it, the Lua Tech's had various bugs fixed since then. So we need a more up-to-date tech system. So the next thing we need is a script to do that. So that's what we've got up here, install. So install is what's going to happen before you run your test. It's not part of the test itself, but it's a setup. So that's the line where you could have tell it to use apt-get to install packages, but I've got a little script. Uh, I haven't actually opened the script, have I? So we need a script that's going, to in, that's going to download and automatically install TechLive. But we want to install only as much of TechLive as we need. And the reason is, this is happening every time you run the tests. So we want to minimise both the time and the load on CTAN for running our test system. So this has developed a little bit over, over time. But what we've got is, you'll see we've got wget, grab the, grab the, grab the uh, current installation, unzip it, move into that directory and then run the installer with a, a profile and the profile is means it's an unattended installation it'll happen automatically so if we look at the profile the profile is very simple it tells the tech live installer where to install and it tells it what scheme I want and I want the minimal scheme unsurprisingly I want to minimize everything to start with and I'm going to add stuff on we don't need any source or any documentation because this is an automated, we don't need any of that. I have to tell it where to install and the, the test system is running without root privileges. So I can't install in the usual location. So I mean, you might think, why is he installing in temp tech live and not in the home directory of the user? That's because I found a bug in the tech live installer whilst doing this. It will do uh, variable expansion in things like techmf config, but it doesn't do it in tech, tech deer. So you can't put tilde or home or anything in there, it doesn't work. Uh, Carl Berry promises that this is going to get fixed real soon now. Um, <clears throat> so for the moment, it just gets, it doesn't really matter anyway because it, the system is going to get torn down every time it, it gets installed. But that's a quick script and that's just the minimum. So Steam Minimal installs, it's not as minimal as it could be. It installs big tech and things that we don't need. But it, it, it's the smallest scheme that's available to TechLive. And it's a, uh, about 50 to 100 megs, I think. So let me go back to my script, and you'll see that that's, the things go on after that. That's because I've installed a minimal system, so then we install all the bits and pieces we need to make our system work. So we need LaTeX, so I add that on. We need the different engines. Um, I've then got an update option. Now you might wonder, why has you got an update in there? Because if you're doing it each time, it's always going to be up to date. And the reason is that as well as allowing us to mess around with the scripting, and installation, the, the Travis system allows us to cache parts of our virtual machine. So just to take a, a snapshot of them at the end of the test. So what I have it set up to do is to snapshot the tech live installation and to reinstall that each time we use it. And so that means that, that rather than downloading from CTAB, it's downloading from their uh, a localized cache where that virtual machine is, which is on Amazon S3. And so um, 
that's very fast, it's close to where the, the test system is, and it's minimizing the load on our um, uh, on the on the, the mirror network. It also means it doesn't have to do the full installation each time. What it, so that's why I have a set up to our script is going to do an update of any packages that are installed. The reason there is that the, the policy for the team is that we always test against the current tech live, um, uh, tech live release. So we want to have it as up to date as possible, but it's going to be testing our code, which isn't necessarily in tech live. You'll also see I've got quite a long list of packages we then add on. You might think, why do we need all of those? That's because part of what I've done with doing this is develop some tests for third-party packages that are using the LaTeX 3 code. And so the idea is we get all of their dependent, just their dependencies, and we can test them without having to have the entirety, the whole of TechLive. So it, currently it's about 200 megabytes um, we end up with as, as a minimalized TechLive installation. Does that all work? Well, as you can see, yes, it does. We get this that each time we do a commit or each time we do a push to GitHub, which is similar to doing a commit for subversion, um, we get a test run and it will send us an email if it fails. It, it, we can set it up to send us an email if it passes, but that would be rather noisy. So again, in our little setup file, you'll see this bit about notifications. And I've customised that because the standard setup will be that it would notify the person who'd made the commit if it failed. But we have a, a, a mailing list for all of the commits, uh, which several members of the team and some other people are on. So it now mails the, the, the list if there's a, a failure or if it changes from failure to success. It also, I've got it set up for so-called Gitter, which we've, I've added on because it was a bit of an experiment. Uh, we haven't really pursued that, but uh, we could at least in principle. So how long did that take me? I think that took me a couple of days to actually sort all of that out. And that included working out all those dependencies. Now you might think, well, that must have been quite painful. Well, it was. So I set up on my own machine, a virtual machine that's the same as the system that the uh, Travis system is using. And so I could do all of the tests, actually working out all those dependencies by just running this myself locally and then adding it all onto the script. And most of the failures actually recently in that list are ones while I was working out what to add onto the testing system itself rather than things that had been in our code. The one thing we did discover is our test script was returning a success um, error code from all the tech, whether they passed or not. So the first thing I actually had to fix because of this was our script itself, which was getting that wrong. So that's actually quite easy to do. It was nothing like, a, so people have suggested it to me a couple of years ago, I think, and I thought it would be incredibly hard work. But it turned out to be very easy. Uh, the other thing I point out, so this doesn't really appear, apply so much to the team, but to other people, it won't only test one branch, it will test different branches. And if you do, if you do a Git flow where people are mm. sending you pull requests, it will test the pull requests before they're added in to your code. So you can see that someone sent you uh, a pull request, which is actually going to pass, it's going to pass all the tests, so you can be sure, that, well, you can at least see that they haven't obviously broken things, although of course you need to check things. So we've got a few, so I asked some people who are using LaTeX 3 code, <coughs> code to send us some contributed tests, and some of them did, and that's where the pull requests come in there, and you'll see that, I think, yeah, some of them passed, and some of them failed, and those failures again were to do with the fact that getting the virtual machine set up to start with was a bit tricky. But as I say, it didn't actually take that long, and an awful lot of that was working out how to automatically install Tech Live and discovering these bugs both in our script and in the Tech Live installation script. So that's automating testing for LaTeX 3 using Travis and using our, our, our build script. It works nicely. You'll see I've added on my own package, SIE Tech. Currently, that's only work passing on my development code, which isn't released. Uh, because I'm adding tests on for that as well. So that's, that failure is because the main release version doesn't actually have any tests at the moment, and so it thinks it's failing. So that's what I wanted to say about that, really. Any questions? It was either very clear or very boring. It's a big download. What? For each test. Um, well, 200 megabytes on Amazon S3 is tiny. You're, 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 you're caching um, the tech live installation. 
Yeah. The virtual machine is what I was going to say. Oh, the virtual machine, well, that's their problem. Um, that, um, that, well, uh, I, I don't know how they do, but, but there's no, the, the, I don't crash the virtual machine. They, each time you run a test, their system provides you a, 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 a standardized virtual machine for it to run on. Oh, the yeah. only thing I'm caching is, the caching is you can add on additional bits of the system beyond what their standard is that you want to cache so you don't have to rebuild it each time you do you each test that it runs. So that's why I'm caching the tech live installation because I otherwise I have to download that from CTAN each time. Right. Um, so I, it's really to avoid the load on CTAN, but it's only the tech live installation that's cached. And we can look at, let's have a look, where's the size of the cache? I'll just move this across a bit. Oh, come on. This is free for open source. Yeah. Free for open source. So if we look at the cache, here we are, it's a 110 megabyte zip or 7 z file that's been cached. And I can force it to rebuild. So my script is, I didn't say, but my script is set up so that if I delete the cache, it will redo the entire installation of Tech Live and get everything. Whereas if the cache is already there, it will just do the update. So that was the idea. So if I just press that delete button, it will delete that cache so you can force it to rebuild. Um. <coughs> so presumably you have a little, <coughs> sorry, you have a little glitch when um, the install script updates itself. When you have to do a, an install update self? Um, the install script is part of the Git repository that you're testing. Yes, yeah, yeah. my install script is. Do you mean, you mean the tech live install script? I mean the tech live install script, yes. Uh, well, yeah, well, that, well, if that update, what, so their system, what it does is it, at the, end, the way it does the caching is at the end of your tests, it will see, it, it will zip it up and basically see if there's been any changes. And if there's been any changes, it right. will update its cache. And if there haven't been any changes, it won't. So each time there's an update to a package sure. that runs in my script, their back end, which is written in Ruby, will detect that okay. and it will update their cache. Right. So the point is we always have, so it means that essentially, provided I don't delete the cache, all I ever have to download from CTAN is any changes that have happened in the, between texts. Yeah, no, that, that wasn't my question. <clears throat> my question was that when, when the uh, TLMGR itself yes. changes, yes. then you need to do a special update, right? Yeah, but that, that, just, that, just, that just does the self all. It will just do that itself. I think it's doing that for anyway. Have, yeah. to, have you got a self in there as well? Yeah, I've got self in there, haven't I? I'm it doesn't really hard to have it always. It's just like... Mm. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, self all. No auto install. So there's a few things that I skipped oh, in the okay. pregnancies. So I you see for yeah, PTEC... Yeah, no, I didn't realise you could do self and all together. Mm. I'll just point out, I've got yeah. no depends for PTEC and uptech, and that's because the way they're packaged up for tech live includes a load of... Um, East Asian fonts, which are very big, and because our test script doesn't care what the typeset output is, it only cares what the log output is, I don't need any of those fonts to actually be installed. Right. I just need to have the map files and things. So there's a few bits at the end just to sort out a couple of map files. So we can avoid a massive amount of download there for PTEC and UpTech by just skipping the install. But that's why I've got no auto install, so it won't add. That also means it won't add any new packages that have been added to Tech Live. It'll only update exactly what I've selected right. to be installed. Brilliant. So in LaTeX, yeah. do you have any regression testing based upon the DVI output? No. no. Because that, that's not what we, we test the log. Because the, I mean, the if, you put show, if you put show output, the log has got... Yeah, that, that, that's the bit we control. We don't control what happens after that. We can only control what happens into the into the lot into the oh, so or PDF output DVI outputs. No, who uses that? The log. I mean, these, the logs. The logs are, are written to have whatever information you want in there. So a lot of them have show output or equivalent. So all the box outputs log. Okay, so so that is equivalent to the DVI. Essentially, yes. I mean, sometimes sometimes the logs aren't doing that. Sometimes it's just got message or whatever. But so well, if, if, if you try to if you try to the log file isn't really. It, it can vary a bit, can't it? But, but, yeah, but you, but you, look, you, but you, you decide you, on you that. Put the, you put the crap in there that you want to see. Yeah. You, you no, just, no, no, no. I'm talk, talk, talking about things like um, it's not line length. No, they're all normalised. We, we, it used to be said, and then it was Perl, and now it's Lua. So the, 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 we, we save normalised log. I mean, that's a different talk, but we save yes. normalised log files. That's available on that's available on our video site from last year. Where I talked about this. Um, been, it's been doing it since yeah. 1990 yeah. or something. Yeah, but we, we've spent a lot of a lot of effort normalizing the logs not only the stuff that was in there from them but particularly to get the cross engine because yeah. Luatec in particular <laughs> is a it'll come up in my talk though yes they I mean ah. Z Z Tech Z Tech E Tech Tech PDF Tech 
Even and, PTA and, that, and, and, and the same, and, you know, the same logs on different systems, you know, Unix or Windows, Mac. The normal system works. We, we can't currently normalise Lewatech log output to match those because it's just not compatible enough or compatible at all. Well, well, no, well, we get, we, we get, yeah, yeah. It depends. Um, it depends what you're testing. Perhaps this is why I mentioned DVI because that is standard. No, Lewatech because Lewatech is Lewitech. about using. Uh, Unicode output, you don't really use DVI mode with Luatech, you don't, well, D Z Tech no, no, no. is complicated. Luatech is something else. Yeah, well, yeah but apart from Luatech, the normalization is fine, it's, it's no problem. But, but, yeah, but also, yeah, the problem with testing the, the DVI or whatever, then you get into, normally you're not wanting to test the whole page anyway, you want to test particular things. So our test, so our test is, you test exactly what you want to in the log. So for my SIU text test, for example, well, I'm typesetting to the units. What I want to know is, do I get from this, my procedure, the right, so essentially I turn some user input into a plain tech, more or less, output. Do I get that? I don't care then how that looks in the DVI, because that's not what's important. What's important is that my code has done the bit it's supposed to do, and produced the right output that I've checked, as far as to the point that I want to check. There is something called unit testing. That's what, yes. Which is what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, as somebody who sort of maintains documents and tech systems, I'm often interested in what consequences does this ha change have on the typesetting of my documents. Uh, so this week I had a support call that turned out that our macros didn't work with the latest version of HyperF. Now, that's a useful thing to know, and the only way I could find that out was noting that there was a new version of HyperF, that's the log file, but it doesn't tell me why it's not working, or warn me that it's not working, but the DVI is different. So for the user, the DVI is really important. If we, if we do have yeah, to say that I've shown up what You're testing each bit that your code does, and you don't need to test, you don't test real documents, you test ones that are focused As on... As I said, there's unit testing and there's integration testing. Mm, very well, we can do mm, expectation, mm, but that's a different talk, as you say. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a, I'm a, Full marks for using Travis. Well, Travis has been promoted to me by various. Um, as I say, you could do this lots of ways. You don't have to do it on a cloud set. So there are other people doing that, and you could do it on a. You could do it other ways, but this was this was a convenient way, and I thought I'd explore how well it worked. Um, and their documentation. Well, it's not perfect, but it's not bad actually. It's quite helpful. Um, a lot of people know how to use Travis. That's good. Um, yeah, um, they probably, in the main, they don't know how to install a tech system on it and get all that part working, though, oddly enough. <laughs> but I know now, so now, now I've worked it out. If anyone else wants to do the same thing, they can just look at what we've done and, you know, pick up on the bits that they want from that. You could test the DVI, you know, you could, you could have a script that tested the DVI, you could do. Although, who uses DVI nowadays? I do. Which, which end users, new end, new end users, if you're teaching... Phil and I do a course, we don't even talk about DVI mode, you don't how, talk how, about how it. How else can I get SVG? To convert PDFs. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, that what do most people, well, it depends what most people is complicated, but what do most people, certainly I talk to, they want to make their own documents, their thesis or a paper or whatever, they want it for them, they want to make a PDF, they want to print it. So we don't talk about DVI mode normally. Yes, it's useful for certain, we had a talk, there was a talk at the Tug meeting where someone was doing they were using the fact that DVI could be chopped up into lots of little bits. May I interrupt? Because I think you're, <coughs> you're talking across purposes. Um, your talk is focused on essentially an automatic unit testing. Yeah. <coughs> um, and the, the question over there was really um, just throwing in the, the question that unit testing isn't end to end system testing. Fair enough. And you're talking about. Yeah, you know, fair, different, fair different enough. Things. Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, good point. Now, yeah, even if you're doing the using DVI, they're using some output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, well, yeah. we, we, we've had this kid about how you can. It's much more tricky to compare out, output, particularly once you get into system fonts and things, because the moment you've got system fonts, they can have different paths, all that kind of stuff. And but you, it depends what you want to test, and what certainly what we want to test. Most of the latex free code is testing quite programmatic stuff, where we can have a well-defined programmatic log from, definitely very log from. Some of the tests, so some of the stuff in there, I'll just point out, one of the tests we have running is the experimental output routine, XOR, and it just basically does show output on the entire entirety of a 10-page document. And uh, so some of the slides, you might wonder why we got the times package. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's one of the ones on there. It was there, and that's because in that document, which has been around for a long time, and we're very careful about not changing it, 
it uses times. So that's in my test system because I need that, otherwise the tests fail. Uh, that one took me a while to track down. <laughs> so uh, uh, a way of expressing the question from the floor, um, independently of the confusion mm -hmm. about unit testing, is in all this, um, uh, in your concepts for testing mm -hmm. in the whole, mm -hmm. the whole system, um, how, how do you address the fact that the software change um, may or may not affect the actual uh, character that the laser printer is putting onto the paper? Well, you, you can log that in, in, in these logs. If you, if you have a test... Well, it's stuff. not what I can do. No, no, it's, yeah, yeah, it's the, the if, you want to, if you want to test the whole document, mm -hmm. which we don't for most of them, but you can't, we have some, so you, if you put show output, you get to you get to ask the representation of, of, of the types of data. Or, or, or what's been passed through. So you, yeah. you're not testing DVIPS or whatever. You, no, yeah. that's not, that's a di that is a different test. So you... But is that done at some level? You know? I, that, that's not what we... We don't, we don't write the, uh, the binaries. So, uh, well, yeah. Although we do yeah. test Miller tech a lot, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're building up some questions for the general discussion at lunchtime, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the point is, I'm, we're specifically talking about testing. You need testing. Well, you can do expectation testing as well. Um, uh, we're, we're talking about testing at the level of the tech. What, what the point is, I'm saying is, we're testing in the tech code. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So. What happens once the tech code stops having control, when you get to, we can output a load of stuff into the log, log that we think no, the no, tech I, should I, I, convert. I understand what you're saying. But you're whether, whether that then actually happens or not, we don't know. Because, you know, if it was a bugging DVIPS or in PDF tech or in Lua tech, that then means it just doesn't do what the log appears to say it does. Then that's, yeah, then that's, that's outside that's of our control. You're not testing tech, are you? No, we're not testing tech. We're not, well, we're not testing we don't, we've, we don't. We don't do tech ninety anyway. But yeah, we've reported several bugs to several tech engines. As yes, as we, have, we have reported things that we found that are problematic, particularly lower tech, where we found lots of oddness. But I think the tech as well. Yeah, because of the yeah. Uh, have you got any checks from Don Canoe? Uh, not recently. Mm. No. <laughs> uh, did Bruno have something? Bruno's got some. Fine's yeah, Bruno, got, Bruno, got a wall full. But Bruno, 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 the flock had some things. That I think I think it was one, wasn't there? But the question was whether whether Canute would count it as a bug or not. Um, but but anyway, the, the, the point is though. I mean, let's be realistically, um, we we don't test Tech 90 with this because X three certainly you, you don't it would it doesn't work. You need you need PDF Tech as a minimum. So uh, that problem doesn't arise. And any and anything that we found in, in Tech at this stage, we put the list that business about par shape. Yeah. That, but that's we, it's like that's a feature. <laughs> so, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. What resolution are you on? Thank you.